Hey there, beer tubers. Welcome back to Maxwell Stars Beer Review. Tonight, we're going to take a look at something new from Budweiser, of all things. This is Budweiser's relatively new uh, copper lager. First brewed last year for the American market. Now it's in the Canadian market this year. So this is copper lager, uh, which is aged on real Jim Beam oak staves. So real barrel staves. 6.2% ABV, which is... Considering this is a Budweiser product, is it really Budweiser at this point? If it's, you know, that beefy of a lager and barrel aged, it just doesn't seem like them. But uh, especially with how much flack they give craft beer, because I don't know. Anyway, so this is a flavorful American copper lager brewed with two row barley and aged on real Jim Beam bourbon barrel staves for a toasted oak aroma, deliciously nutty taste with a caramel rye and vanilla notes and smooth finish. Yay. Yeah, so like I said, this was first released in the States uh, last year and just made its way up in can form here in New Brunswick, at least. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be rolled out across country as well. It's, uh, other than that, I mean, it's in characteristic Budweiser style. It's got this little crown imprint in the, uh, the pull tab on it. Well, uh, without further ado, let's make like Jim Leahy with the Bim Jim and you need to have a little drinky poo. Pour that in my perfect pint glass from Sam Adams. Yeah. Get a little aggressive pour so I get a little more head. Yeah. So, I think this is the biggest thing I really wasn't expecting to get from a Budweiser product. Look at that. That's actually a reasonable amount of copper, copper amber color. Nice, off white, like, uh, color could I describe that as? It's not peach, it's just, it's got this kind of red hue to the head. And it seems to be sticking around too. Lots of carbonation coming up through it. Wow, that's... Like, if you were to hand that to me and tell me it was some kind of, like, barrel-aged pale ale or a nice red ale, I'd believe you. I wouldn't think that would be a Budweiser. Mmm. Let's go to whiff. So off the top of that, I'm getting caramel, molasses, bits of vanilla, maybe some hint of cherries, like sweet cherries. I'm probably thinking of it because I read it on the label, but there is a little bit of like this nuttiness, like a hazelnut almost. Maybe bordering towards a walnut. There's a sweetness now coming through as the head dies off. It's almost like a cola. Yeah, that's a remarkably complex smell for a Budweiser. Let's put it down the sash. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Wow, it's different. I'm drinking it cold too like you probably should with a Budweiser. So I'm not sure if that's affecting my opinion so much. I'm getting this mouth coating sweetness of, uh, of caramel, this burnt caramel and, uh, and vanilla. Obviously, stuff coming in from the bourbon. Very carbonated, but it's it's also somewhat soft in its carbonation too. So it's it's not like dominating or masking the flavor. It's just sitting on top of it. A bit of a roasting note in the in the finish. A nuttiness and a woodiness. You can definitely get the oak tannins, and you definitely get like this bit of like walnut consistency to to it as well. Walnut there's a taste. Walnut nuttiness. And of course, evaporating up the back of the throat is this big corn sona note. Now, 
I did have the opportunity to try one of these a few days ago. I got significantly more corn out of the aftertaste than I did with this. And that's kind of why I'm saying, like, I feel like because I'm drinking this cold, that corn note is kind of muted. And that's actually a good thing for this. So like any Budweiser product, I would still recommend drinking this as cold as possible. Excuse me. And yes, it is very carbonated. But be totally honest, that's one of the best Budweiser products I've ever had. The best anything that has the Budweiser label on the front. I mean, the mere fact that I'd be sitting here enjoying a Budweiser just boggles my mind. I mean, Budweiser, Bud Light, just terrible beers, in my opinion. I can't stand them. But this one... This one actually tastes like they're really trying. But to me, like, how much is that the malt? How much is the actual beer? How much is it that, you know, Jim Beam Oak Staves are great things to use? This really reminds me of, like, uh, Innocent Gun. But it's kind of like... Like, Innocent Gun isn't as good as it used to be. And this is almost like... They've gone... Like, they've kind of gotten a little weak sauce. This one here is because it gives me those big bourbon notes that I used to get out of Innocent Gun. But steering the other way towards macro lager with corn soda notes in the back. But I gotta say, that is actually quite tasty. I like this better than the first can I had of it. Probably because of the temperature. I'm gonna give that a three and a half. I got it. I think it deserves it. And it's absolutely mind-blowing to me that I'm drinking a Budweiser and thinking, hey, this is actually pretty good. It's not bad. It's not terrible. And I've certainly had worse Budweiser products. I'd recommend seeking it out. That's pretty tasty. Anyway, thanks for watching Maxwell Stars beer review of the Budweiser Copper Lager with Jim B. Moke Staves. Asian on Jim B. Moke Staves. Yeah, check it out. I don't mind it. I might get this again. Cheers.